Hey, welcome back to Gold Scratch. So, I don't normally do how-to videos. Uh, we just did a video on this 427, the Almighty 427, and my producers uh, encouraged me to, to do a couple of uh, how-to videos. So, I just did one on determining combustion chamber volume, and I'm going to try to do one for you on uh, installed spring height. So, I, met I mentioned in that video that the install height of these valve springs, the, the cam I'm using is... Uh, 224, 230 cam, and the comp recommends the 911 spring, which is uh, 1.9 inch installed height. So when this engine is actually ready to go to the dyno, it'll be installed at exactly 1.9 inches. So how do we know what height it is and how to get to that 1.9 inches? The first thing we need to know is how what it is right now. So because this engine had uh, bigger valve springs before, the the um, the, the, the base of the cam seat or the spring seat was machined down deeper. So these springs are installed at close to two inches installed height, which is going to work in my favor because as I mentioned for the breaking of the, the flat tap the cam, one way I'll reduce pressure on the cam is by installing the springs. And in order to, do, to reduce pressure, I'll re remove the vibration or the, the damper from the inside of the spring. And I'll also install them without any shims at the full installed height, almost two inches. And that will reduce my, my spring pressure uh, at, at open to under, under 250 pounds. And the term we use is, is pressure. It's not really the right term. It's force. It's not a PSI. It's amount of force, the amount of pounds that are pushing up and down on that spring. It's not PSI. It's, it's pounds force. So a uh, small point, but I had to bring that up. So what we're trying to determine here to start with is what is the open, what is the installed height pressure. So I'm pulling this spring up. If this head was on an engine, it would actually be easier to do because you could put air into the cylinder, block the engine from rotating, put pressure on the bottom of the valves, and that would hold the valve up tight against the seat. So we have to do, hold it up ourselves and make sure it is, and it is nice and tight. But when I go to, go to uh, compress the spring, sometimes the valve wants to move, which makes it a little bit more awkward but it's workable and I do heads like this all the time. So how do we, how do we measure what this installed height is? Once we know what it is, uh, then we can add shims. You can buy shims that fit under there in 15, 30 and 60 thou increments uh, of thickness. And I just dropped the... Oh, let's get short I get back on there. I'll get it back on there, hang on. It's awkward, I just dropped it. Okay, I just dropped the... Keepers, but I got them back now. Okay, so you could buy shims 15, 30, and 60 thou thickness, and so you just use shims in order to uh, get your actual install height. But you start off by determining what the install height is. So, and for purposes of installing camshafts, the the uh, recommended install height once again for these uh, 911 springs is 1.9 inches, uh, and the accuracy of measurement required for something like this, plus or minus 20 thou is plenty. Uh, minimum shim you can buy is 15 thou anyways. So if you're plus or minus 20 thou on your measurement, you're fine. The, the, the highest end way to do that, most expensive way to do that, you can actually buy a spring micrometer that fits over the valve and it works just like any other micrometer. It measures the exact height of the installed pressing onto the bottom of the retainer. The problem with that is they're fairly expensive and, you, and if you do a lot of different engines, you don't just need one, you might need a number of them because the install height's different and they're only made for certain diameters of springs, certain diameters of retainers, etc. And so you need no one, you may need no one number of them in order to do that. So this is another way to do it, that I do it, that that's accurate enough. And one of the important things if you're doing, trying to do precision measurements is repeatability. If you use the same method multiple times and you get exactly the same result, it's probably a solid method. If you get a different result every time, don't just pick the last result because it's probably wrong. So that's what I go by. I record, every, I don't just do it in memory. I record everything I do on paper that gets transferred to an Excel spreadsheet. It gets recorded. And when these heads go out, they'll have a sheet attached to them with all the documented install height, the pressure at install height, the pressure at open height and all the information that you need. So to start off with, this is just a snap gauge. You can buy these fairly inexpensively. I have a whole range of sizes right up to like six inches. 
So they, if anybody hasn't used them before, they're called snap cages because they snap. When you put it into the space, you let go of it, it opens up to the space that's there. So um, you kind of have to come around this side. Right? So I make sure that the retainer is pulled up. I put my little snap gauge in the space, make sure that it's parallel and straight, lock it down, take it out, put my vernier calipers, set it to zero, and this 1.946. So a 946, uh, 1.946 installed height. Once again, the installed height recommended for these 911 springs is 1.9. So I'd have to put 46 thou of shims in order to get my 1.9. So I'd put a 30 thou and a 15 thou, that's 45 thou, I'd be reading the money. So that's how we get the final installed height. So the next thing I need to know is, in this case, they're brand new springs. It may be redundant to do that, but if you're checking springs, to know how much force I have of installed height. So that's what my spring check is for. So I'm interested in knowing what it is at 1.9 inches. So put it in the spring checker and let read on the scale. Okay. And sometimes I got to oil my little spring checker here, but there's 1.9 and I measure it. And I'm not getting a reading on one light. Why is that happening? Sorry. Oh, okay, there we go. It's about 135 pounds at 1.9 inches, okay? And that is actually correct, okay? The next thing I need to know is what the, what the spring force is, not PSI, the spring force is at half an inch lift. This cam is 0.52 lift, so that's 1.9 divided by 0.5 is 1.4. So I go down to 1.4 on my install, install light here. One, two, three, four. Oh. Here we go. And it's 285 pounds right on there. Sorry for you. It's there. Almost 209 pounds. Okay. So I'm doing this quickly for demonstration purposes. If I'm doing this for final assembly, I may check it a number of times, make sure I get repeatability and accuracy and be satisfied with the numbers. And then any documentation would reference the actual numbers I achieved versus the manufacturer specification so we know if there's any variation. If you're wondering about springs that have been used, if they've lost their tension or their force, and if you know their original manufacturer specification, you can actually measure them on your spring tester and determine whether they're losing any, any of their uh, force or not. So, so the final result will be, once again, uh, when I start this engine up, this 427 engine up, I will leave the damper out of the spring and install the spring by itself. I will not put any shims in it. I've already mocked it up and tested it. I get less than 250 pounds with the valve open uh, using this method, which is real safe. It won't be too much force and won't be hard on a flat top of camshaft. Once the camshaft's broken in, I put the damper back in and I set the install height at 1.900 plus or minus 20 thou, and we're good to go. The engine's ready for the dyno. Hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching Gold Scratch.